Hey, good morning. Welcome back. Our study takes us to 1 Samuel 15, starting at verse 4 and going out, ending at verse 9. So Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in Telaim, 200,000 foot soldiers and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came to a city of Amalek and lay in wait in the valley. And Saul said to the Kenites, Go, depart, get out from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For you showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. And Saul attacked the Amalekites from Havilah all the way to Shur, which is east of Egypt. He also took Agag, king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep, the oxen, the fatlings, the lambs, and all that was good, and were unwilling to utterly destroy them, but everything despised and worthless, that they utterly destroyed. Okay, so let's pause there for a moment. Didn't we find out, you know, you know, yesterday morning, the command, what was the command there? Uh, go, destroy them, Amalek, and utterly destroy all that they have. Do not spare them. It's pretty clear stuff, right? Kill all the animals and so on. Kill everybody. There was no exception for the king. Don't kill everybody but the king. That wasn't what it said. He spares the Kenites, you know. Good, plus one, you know. Gets a score there. That's good. It's at verse 9 that we get the key. But Saul and the people. Oh, wait a minute. But Saul and the people? I thought Saul was king. I thought they wanted a king. A king like all the nations. But Saul and the people spared a gag. And, you know, the best sheep and oxen and so on, the lambs and everything. The best stuff, they kept it. They, the stuff that was worthless, they threw it away. But you know what? It's Saul and the people. Now, Saul was willing to become the king. He didn't really seek it out, but he, he, he went ahead. And he's the king. So whose job is it? Who was given instructions on this case? Saul was. What was the instruction? No, take, take no uh, spoils, destroy everything. But Saul and the people uh, decided to keep all the good stuff and throw away the others. So basically, Saul was weak and watery here. He wouldn't stand up to the people. He just went ahead and went along with them. And so there's kind of this aberration going on. Now Saul and the people are outside of God's will. And there's going to come a reckoning for that. We'll look at it again tomorrow morning. But here we have the situation. Saul is the king, but he's not acting like the king. And a lot of our leaders today, if we want to apply this to our day, sadly, a lot of our leaders today, sometimes leaders in the church, we don't lead. Now, we work within parameters. And like my, my group, my church is a very, there's a lot of representation and voting and, you know, committees, lots of committees. And so we tried to get a lot of voices, a lot of input from a lot of people. But when we make a decision as a group that's made legitimately, we need to follow through with that decision. We understand that that's God's will. In this case, Saul was the one in charge. In the case of a more representative body, then the decisions of that representative body would matter. But this is not that. This is Saul and the people. And these people don't have a vote. He's a king. It's, it's a monarchy. And so he is failing in his leadership capacity. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, however things are arranged in our congregation, in our denomination, Lord, help us to be faithful and true to the sound principles you give us. Help us to lead, even if it goes against the grain. Long-standing institutions may go totally wrong. What do we do then, Lord? Help us to be willing to either reform them or abandon them as you lead us. A lot of times, a lot of our energies go in the wrong direction to sustaining things that are outside your will and are never going to be back in your will. Help us to be righter than this, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's find out how God is leading. And again, without reservation, let's go in his direction. That's, he doesn't ask us for a lot. But that he asks us for, faithfulness, faithfulness, not policy. And here we had Saul bending to the people, and may it not be so for us. God be with you today in all that you do.